All right, Mr. Charles, we'll make it simple. TT here again. Welcome to another theory video. This theory video is on Cape Computer Science Unit 2. I hope you learned something. All right. So the concept of a circular queue is this. If you have a linear queue and you take the two edges. Wow. Yeah. And you take the two edges and you make them loop back onto each other, you'll create a circular queue. And the circular queue will now just be a wraparound. So you're taking the same array, but you're looking at it from a abstract data type perspective and you're making a circle. So you'll have the, this will be the actual start and end of the array, but you're actually just wrapping it around in a circle to kind of be smart. So what happens with a circular queue is that you now have to be able to wrap it around and then once you wrap it around then the data could keep going on and on and on and on and on because as soon as you take out something from here you just create spaces and the data will just keep following that pattern and once you're creating a space it will just keep going in a circle because you won't ever run out of space like a linear queue because with a linear queue once you reach here you fall off the edge but with a circular queue there is no edge so to implement a circular queue, you have some conditions that you have to check. Normally, to check to see if is full is um is uh, true, you would have to check to see if the front is um less than max minus one, right? So. We're looking at it from the perspective of doing an NQ. If you're going to an NQ and you have the value that you want to put and the array that you're going to send it to, you have to check to see if the queue is full. So this could easily be broken down into is full, is empty, and um, all the different types, right? But I have all it in one, in one code because I needed to see the whole process of trying to NQ a value. So let's say we're trying to NQ a value, right? The first thing you have to check for is to see if the queue is full. If the queue is full, then you really can't check, you can't really can't put anything inside there, right? To check for the queue is full, you're going to check to see if front is equal to zero and rear is equal to size minus one. If front is equal to zero, which is this part here, and your rear is equal to size minus one, that means you fill this thing out with numbers so much that this, this number filled up, then you had this, the 56, then you had the 30, then you had the 5, then you had the 40. And you put all those numbers in to the point that you keep adding one to the rear and the rear ends up becoming now size minus one. So the, size, the rear is now four. If the front is still zero and the rear is minus one, I mean size minus one, that means the queue is full. Clearly. Because they just keep adding information going around. But there's also another condition which is the or condition. So or if rear is equal to front minus one. So let's say the queue went through a whole set of revolutions already and you ended up now with the rear becoming front minus one. So the front is now at location two and the rear is at location one. So if the rear is equal to front minus one, that means the queue is full, but it's not full with the original. It's not full in the original sense where front never moved. So that means here there was only a whole set of NQs taking place. But here I had NQs and DQs, and they now reach to the point where the rear is matching the front. So it's full. So that would be like a is full. So if it does that, you would have the queue is full. But however, remember we're trying to do our NQ. So in NQ in, we're gonna we're gonna now say, alright, cool. If it does if this is not true, good. Let's move on. To see what will happen if this is true. If it is not full, then we have to check for something. We have to check to see how are we going to put the data in. So in, to put the data in, it could either be that it is totally empty or there is one spot empty. So we have to check to see if it's totally empty. For it to be totally empty, front had to be equal to minus one. If front is equal to minus one, that means nothing was ever put inside of it. So therefore, we just go in and set the front and the rear to zero and put the value in at rear right that way 
it's cool it's not a problem set the value in as rear and, and we good so we put the value we set both of them to front and rear will be zero and we'll just put the number that we get which will be like 20 and it will start like that and then we just we could just keep adding values over and over and over it's not a problem so if we reach the case that it's it's totally um empty it's never been used before then good we'll put the value in there but if this case is not met then we have to check to see if another case is met which is a very very special case this special case is if rare reaches to the last possible value which will be four in this case then we can't just add one because if we add one we're gonna add one to four and we end up getting five but there is no five because the array only has um, zero to four so if there is no five then the next thing that we're supposed to go to is location zero so we have to basically force the array or the stack i mean the queue into thinking all right if the rear is equal to size minus one and the front is not equal to zero meaning that the front the front can be equal to zero to do this because then it will be totally full so if the rear is not equal to size minus one equal to so if the rear is equal to size minus one meaning the rear has reached the end which is right here and the front is not immediately blocking the spot that we have right there then good we will set the rear to zero instead because normally we would have put rear plus plus but we can't put rear plus plus because if we put rear plus plus we'll be adding one to the four and then we'll end up getting five and that would be um that would be catastrophic so we set the rear to zero and then we're going to take the value and put it inside there which will get the value to be put inside here properly which could be a nine or something like that right and then if all those things are not true cool then we just go to the else which is the else just carry up the rear by one because this is a normal situation the front and the rear nowhere close to each other the rear is over here so we just add one to the rear and we put the value inside and boom it's going to work easily the nine will be able to get in there easily so under normal circumstances what we want to do is this this is what would normally work in a um in a linear queue but with a circular queue you have to check for this stuff here to check to see if it is full in two different ways you have to check to see if it was totally empty and you have to check to see if the rear has reached to its um if the rear has reached to its Let's call this word to the last part. All right. Ask no questions about that. It's highly unlikely that they're going to give you a whole, whole, whole set of code to write out for this one NQ. Most of the times they will tell you that you have the available ability to use um, is full and is empty. But if they do ask you to write the, the code for it you need to be able to understand what is happening or they might give you the code and you have to interpret it all right so just remember all of this code here could be substituted for is full and then um this code here could be substituted for is empty Sorry. All right, so let's continue. Okay, so let's let's say we have to DQ from a circular queue. DQ in from a circular queue is a little easier. You only have to check for four things. The first thing you have to check for is if front is equal to minus one and rear is equal to minus one. That means it is totally empty. So you have to return that um, it's totally empty. Can I return int min? I don't know what I'm there for. Let's take that out. Right, so uh, this one is totally empty 
Then now, uh, once you finish with this block here, let's check to see if it's totally empty. And then you could return the value. Right, so once it's not totally empty, you're going to actually take what is at the front and put it inside the data, right? But if you do a next if now and say if the front and the rear match to each other, you just took the data out. So then you're going to unset the front and the rear back to minus one, which is called resetting the queue. So you're resetting the queue. Once you get once you once you have front is equal to rear, you only have one value to take out. So you're going to take out the value and reset the queue. If, however, front is equal to size minus one, which is the front is equal to the last value of the queue, then you'll have to set back the front to zero. And then if that don't happen, then you just carry up the front like normal, which will be this one here. So this is basically a simple thing. Check to see if it's totally empty. If it's totally empty, you print um, Q is empty and then you return, um, I don't know, minus 999 or some kind of thing to say that, well, it's totally empty. Do you return anything? However, if it's not totally empty, then okay, cool. Just take whatever is at front because you, you're sure that whatever is at the front is what you want to take out. But after you take the information out of the front, you have to either reset the queue or carry up front by one. If front is equal to rear, that means both of them are on the same spot, so you have to reset it. If, however, the front ends up reaching to the last possible value then you're going to have to set the front to zero manually because you have to tell it well don't go to five because if you do front plus plus and it was four it's going to five but five doesn't exist so you're going to have to make sure that you set it to zero and if it falls in the case where front was a regular number like zero one two or three that was less than the max then you just carry up the front by one and then you return the data that you took out because that's the whole point of DQN. DQN is just taking the data out of front, but with a circular queue, you have to make sure you set it back properly. With a linear queue, you don't have to set it back, but with a circular queue, you have to make sure you set it back each time. Thanks for watching the theory video. If you learned something, give it a like, give it a share, subscribe, do whatever you have to do. And if you want practical applications of the things, feel free to check out any of my classes. You can find them on my website at makeitsimplett.com. I have classes for all different subjects from CSEC IT, CAPE IT, CAPE Computer Science, and many different tutorial videos that you could find on this channel. So um, thank you very much and look out for the next video that is here or here because I have all the theory videos for all the subjects.